I've been completely obsessed with the new Post Malone song, Chemicals, which is why I decided to recreate it from scratch. So in a couple of hours in Ableton, I was able to come up with something like this. show you guys how I did it. But first, if you haven't already, please hit subscribe. So I figure we might as well start from the top where we have these really nasty sub basses. So this bass is actually separated into two main parts. This sort of upper Reese bass layer and then this lower sub bass layer. They're both made from the same sub patch, actually. The only difference is for this top one, I have it playing more of an octave up. It might actually be two octaves. And then this lower one is my sub layer and I'm playing it lower, but I'm also turning off any kind of weird stereo effects. I find that it's best to have like your really deep sub basses be in mono. And when you're trying to get that mono sound, it's best to actually just go for the sound design route because me taking this bass and just turning off any stereo effects and just having it be mono straight from the front works out way better from a mixing standpoint than trying to collapse this stereo bass to be mono. Like it's so low and deep that like if I don't turn my sub on, I actually can't really hear it that well. And when you have stuff that is that low, you really wanna make sure that it's mono and by mono, you're not just slapping like a mono utility thing on a stereo send because that's where you get like face cancellation stuff. Also with these guys, I tried to go a little bit heavier with the compression. So in the sub layer, I'm using a bit of a glue compressor to sort of tie things together as a whole. Then some optical compression. I personally like using optical compression for like bass stuff. They tend to play well with stuff that has a bit of dynamic tonal characteristics. Like you have a lot of big notes that you're just sort of holding and they're shifting across the scale, but then also dynamically, some notes are louder than others. So for that type of stuff, I like optical. Little bit of bass rider just to level it out. And then a little bit of it's like utility to sort of gain it up when it gets to the chorus, or I should say gain it down prior to getting to the chorus and then letting it come back up to zero when it gets to the chorus. And then this upper guy up here, this regular one, just has a high pass with a little bit of optical on it. Now we will look at our electric guitar cars, which there's a lot here. Probably the most recognizable one is this guy down here, the... which honestly, I'm not sure if I got as down as I would like to be. It's a little too snappy for me right now, but I got this from playing it on a Strat and I played it through this Andean bottle sound with a little bit of Octaver, just blending in a little bit of lower sub octave. I also blended in a little bit of Transient Shaper because I felt like the uh, the initial clickiness of it was a little bit too strong. Doing some EQ and then some tube compression. Tube stuff is a great option if you're trying to like hold out a long note or like a big strummed chord thing. It just adds like a good sustain to stuff. We then have these two guys, which are like almost like Beach Boys style strummed electrics. <laughs> are just like big shiny shimmery open chords that you're just strumming and holding out and they add a nice roll to the chord progression again also using my strat then we have this guy in the song i think he just did like a pitch shifted octave thing but i wanted to mess around with some other stuff so here's the clean guitar and then we're going into this snowflake creamy snowflake sound Great for ambient stuff, a little bit of EQ. But I felt like it was just missing something and I realized that there was a bit of a higher octave thing happening in the original sound. So what I did was I opened up Emergence, which is a like a granular sampler delay thing. And for anyone who doesn't know, a grain is just like a really tiny sample of audio. So it almost acts like a delay, but what it's doing is it's taking the incoming audio and taking little tiny snippets or grains from that sound and then playing those back almost like a delay. And the cool thing about it is you can do weird stuff with them, like reverse them or mess with the time or the amount of grains that can be out there at once. The big thing for this guy was the fact that I pitched the grains up an octave. So if I just play this without any of the guitar tone stuff, you'll hear. 
super weird, super spacey. Also, I have the pan knob just doing this over and over again, which I've gotten from mapping an LFO to that, which is a way to like automate turning knobs without actually having to physically do it or draw automation. So that run into the guitar tone, we have this. And then here at the very top, it's barely there, but in like the second chorus, you can hear that there's a bit of a pickup note on an electric in between certain bars. I just used my 335 and the Chandler Limited amp from the Plugin Alliance stuff, a little bit of limiting and a little bit of spring reverb. I feel like spring stuff is really good if you're trying to get that sort of like jangly, almost like 60s guitar tone sound. And here's what all of that sounds like with a basses. This guy feels a little out of place because you can't hear any drums or anything, but you can just hear like from a texture standpoint, there's just so much going on and it's so spread out and it's really fun. Also to give a little nod to the outro, which is like my favorite part of the song, we have this piano part. Nothing really crazy going on here. Just use the Maverick sound, like the basic preset from Contact. Going into the reverb, uh, the big thing here is to make sure that you're playing like octaves, like just full on like get, get that wingspan going on the keys. They just had like a little flare in between certain sections. And then we have our synths, which are more of like sound design things. So my favorite one is this guy right here, the which is me just seeing how far I can take up uh, free plugins. So let me show you everything dry and then build up from there. So I'm starting with this decent sampler patch from Venus Theory, which I've been digging decent sampler a lot recently. I've been watching a lot of Venus Theory and Dave Hillowitz's YouTube channels, which are really cool, by the way. It's a really good like behind the scenes of like how sample libraries get made. But this is one that they did where they ran analog synths through like VHS tapes and stuff like that. And they just made this really cool like warbly textured synth. This is a paid pack that they have, but they actually have a free version. And so I took that, low passed it, ran it into some space modulator, also free. And then I don't remember if I said it earlier, but Emergence is also free. This one is doing the same thing, only instead of one grain stream, we have two and they're panned a little bit differently. They have different lengths. One of them throws them an octave lower. The other one throws them an octave up. Weird stuff. And then some Valhalla Supermassive. This We Are Stardust sound is really good. And then some high passing and low passing. And it just makes this really nice bed of ambience underneath everything. We also have this little guy here, which is like a transition between the pre-chorus and the chorus. It's just like an analog synth. So I use the uh, Arturia Analog Lab ARP 2600, just using a sequencer as a way to like hold down one note and have it go da 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 da, which is honestly like my quickest way of using a sequencer. I know I should probably use the arpeggiator for arpeggio. For me, I just, I normally throw it on as like a one button, like, okay, I want this to be like a steady da 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 da. And I just throw it on there, hit one note, and then you can adjust the attack and release with the gate knob here, so. Some clap impact. And now we can look at the drums. So I felt like the drums for this song were kind of like a live kit feel that were kind of like accentuated a little bit in post. It's very much like a indie pop, like vibey drum sound. So I used my Rock Solid Easy X for a lot of it. I used it for my kick. Mainly because I noticed in the original recording, there is a bit of a, a like a woofiness of low end that comes after the hit, which comes mainly from like a room mic. And so I just used a kit like this to accentuate that and then controlled the velocity and the MIDI notes after it. And just a little bit of mirror EQ to like balance it out with those sub basses. Chorus, we then have snare also from that same kit. <laughs> Before you ask, yes, it is totally possible to just stem stuff out directly out of Superior Drummer and just like have it be on separate channels and do different inputs. You can 100% do that. I was just really lazy when I was making this beat and so I just duplicated it multiple times, mainly to get like the kick, the snare and the cymbals out on their own separate tracks. So and of course we have these guys, which are like the rides and crashes. <sighs> 
I think it's also really important when you're doing like faster MIDI stuff like this, that you actually like lay it on your keyboard, even if you're going to quantize it later on, because like you can see, like I barely any of these MIDI notes are actually like consistently hitting the same velocity. And that adds a whole lot to the feeling of it being a live drum, even though it's like perfectly quantized and on the grid. I, I feel like when you don't have this and it's all like, that's where stuff starts to sound robotic. In the beginning of the song, it actually uses this rim sound here, which is just a sample I got from Splice. But then I have that running into a group with a couple of other elements. I have some brushes going from a Steven Slate kit. And then I actually have this sample here that I made, which was like a rosary that I had, not like this one, but one that actually had like beads on it. And I went up to the microphone and I was just like jingling it in sort of a rhythm. And then I processed it and quantized it. I like I was just doing this in my hands with the rosary and it had like a cool rhythm to it because it almost feels like it's about to like not catch up to it on the one, which is kind of a vibe for percussion stuff. But yeah, then all three of those guys are running into a bus that has a little bit of erosion and decap. If I actually take that off, you'll listen to how they sound. And then with decapitator and erosion on. Again, I'm tired of sounding like a broken record at this point, but one of the main ways to make sure that if you're blending multiple samples like this together, that they're all gonna play well together in terms of frequency and they're not gonna sound weird and wonky is going through and actually like tuning them and making sure that they match on their fundamentals. So I believe all of these guys are tuned to an A. So this, so you can see here on the drum rack, I dropped it down to semitones. In this rosary percussion thing, I dropped that down to semitones. And then I think this uh, sampler was actually good the way it was. And the reason I chose A was because uh, when I'm tuning stuff in terms of drums, I try to go for either the tonic, which is like the one of the scale that you're in, or the five. And so since we're in the key of D, the A was the five. So everything is just kind of tuned to an A. But then yeah, all of those drums running into a little bit of VCA, which I haven't messed around with VCA compression a lot. If I'm being totally honest, I've always just used FET compression, but I'm trying to, trying to ease into using a VCA more because there's a lot more flexibility in terms of like, you don't have as much added color to it. So here's what it sounds like without the VCA. And here it is on. Really aggressive. So I brought that mix down to about here. So bypassing it. I'm bypassing it. There's just a lot of smaller hits that get brought up with really aggressive compression like that when you blend it in. And then the part that most people are probably familiar with, which is the acoustic guitars. So we have these guys from the intro. I actually found with these guys, it's easy to play the riff if you have the open notes stringing out, but part of the tonal characteristic of the riff is to actually like be playing it a bit up on the neck. Like holding the notes here instead of down here, it just changes the tonal characteristic a little bit. Just using some light EQ, with some R comp, and then some tube compression on the group, just because I don't really care about like having one on each individual guy most of the time. If I'm conscious about it, I try to just do it on bus or something. And then the last thing is the these chorus acoustics. Which is the exact same setup with that exact same acoustic, just strumming big open like cowboy chords, I call them. Just something that has like a big open feel. Same mixing chain, honestly. I did color these a lot differently though on the bus with some Kramer tape, a little bit of RC20, and then some compression. And I even did like some EQ dips because I noticed that the like pick noise with these guys was actually pretty gnarly. So I wanted to like tame that a bit. And then, yeah, I think that's everything. Um, on my master bus, just have a tiny bit of EQ to tame some of the mids. Again, a little bit of tube compression, a little bit of multi-band compression going into a limiter. And here's what all of it sounds like together.
app and that's what everything sounds like. If you enjoyed this video, uh, hit subscribe. And if you have any other songs that you would like me to recreate from scratch, uh, put them down in the comments. I love seeing what you guys suggest. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys next week. Later.